Hey guys, Marsico X here, and today we're taking more of a laid back approach on Anophile, touching on the gateway anime that got me hooked into anime at a very early age. Now, this is going in tandem with the articles I've been writing on AnophileReviews.com, the website for Anophile, and as well as feedback I've been getting from my Patreon backers. They're scrolled down on the list below. If you would like to join them, just join patreon.com forward slash X, and you too can have your say about what I review and do. But back to the main topic. Dragon Ball Z. But long story short, I saw it on Cartoon Network in 2000 when I was 13, and I got hooked ever since. And I've gone on to many awesome things, including Dragon Ball Z Abridged, which you probably know me most of all from. What's the main topic today? Well, it's about this dude, Goku. And... Yes, I know that I voice Goku, and again, I'm just going to be going on a tangent here. And this is just me kind of thinking about my thoughts about the character. And the voices in particular. Okay, I'm going to get it out of the way. I voice Goku in Dragon Ball Z Abridged, and I find that to be a massive honour. And I, it touches me whenever I hear people say that they like my voice. But, let's just be honest, I'm not an official voice. I'm not gonna be. So... Let's just get that out of the way. I'm not comparing myself to any of the people I'm listing. I'm saying I take inspiration from them, but I'm not going to be a pompous douche and just say that, oh, I deserve to be part of the group as well because I voiced it in a parody. No. I do it because I enjoy it. That's simple. What were the voices of Goku when I grew up? The first voice I grew up was, was Ian Corlett's, and I thought it was good. I... Didn't question it, and there was something about Corlett's performance which really was engaging with me, and I do incorporate that in my voice, and it's something about, you know, he can get really tough and just really intense, but he's also really kind of calm. So, you know, let's play a clip of Ian Corlett's Goku. <sighs> this one ought to do. <laughs> yeah! We have no other choice now but to attack him head on! Colette didn't last long in Goku because he moved on to other things. And then we got Peter Kalimis, which carried on until about episode 53. And the and the Tree of Might movie. And I believe the first three Dragon Ball Z movies. So Dead Zone, World's Strongest, and Tree of Might. So we got something different. And actually, this is where I get most of my inspiration for the Goku voice. From Kalimus's Goku. His Goku is kind of a bit more aggressive. And in terms of upbeat. And something a bit more action-y. So he kind of has this kind of tone going about him. Especially with the R's. So... When I hear Vegeta, I thought it kind of screamed out the word attack. And so, I did. That kind of voice. That ton of lard was a good warm-up. <laughs> so Kalimus has that interesting vibe about Goku, which I take the most inspiration from. All of the main Goku voice actors I really like, and I take little bits of that and that and this and this and that and that and this and this and so forth, and incorporate it into something different. Something a bit unique, something that stands out. But going back to when I first heard Kalimis, uh, I thought it was a little odd that it suddenly changed, but thankfully in my mind when I was 13, 14, I wasn't as aware of voice acting. And so it felt not that much different, so I just took it, and it's only when I went back and watched those episodes now that I noticed there's a difference, because there is. Corlett's is a bit more grainy, Kalimis's is more smooth, because in the UK, it did this weird thing on Cartoon Network and Toonami, where it kind of went from the Funimation dub to the Ocean dub about every 10-20 episodes starting from the Android saga, so we would get both. So I got Shemmel's Goku, Sean Shemmel, and Kirby Morrow's, who was the Goku for the Ocean dub of Dragon Ball from the Android Saga all the way to the Boo Saga. So we got really different approaches, and they are different, because 
Schimmels is the definitive English Goku. Everyone, if you think of Goku and you say, who voices him? And people say, Sean Schimmel. Schimmel is great as Goku. He has that range. And I do take inspiration because he can be goofy. And Goku is goofy. And that, that, that he's meant to be a big child. He's a big kid. So you can't just make him sound tough like some bad dubs that we have heard of Goku. Roll the UK dub! Saving the Earth will have to wait. First, I have to save you, son. And then, I'll take care of you! It's technically not the UK dub. It was actually produced by AB Productions, which is a French company. And, but people refer to it as the UK dub. So I don't know why, but that's just the way it is. And then, of course, we have the Malaysian dub of particularly a Fusion Reborn. Well, tape. I have only one way to beat this thing. Huh? What's that? Combine our body. Combine our body? Are you crazy? So yeah, we got the bad ones out of the way, but back to the good ones. Shemmel and Mora have two different approaches, and they're considered as the most um, prolific English Gokus. We have Shemmel and Moro. Shemmel's is deeper and more authoritative. Like, you don't want to mess with Shemmel's Goku voice. Whereas Moro's one is a bit more... dudish. It's hard to describe, but... With Kirby Moro's, it's kind of really up here, and... You know, you don't have to do this, Vegeta! And... Yeah, I kind of got that vibe when I saw Kirby Morrow in the flesh when I went to Anime Evolution in nine, no, 2007. And uh, that was my first ever anime convention in Vancouver, Canada at uh, the Simon Fraser University. And just seeing him doing a panel, that was really cool. Get a load of that! I knew old Kai was doing something, but, but look at him, he's normal. I like Morrow's voice for that because he does have that upward beat of Goku, which is cool. And really, though, it goes back to Shemmel, and he has that range, and damn, man, the screams that that guy can do. There's no denying it. Shemmel is a great Goku. He could have a slightly higher voice, but... He did have that to begin with when he first started it, but obviously over time, that voice would have mellowed out into something a bit more comfortable. So that just comes with experience. So we got that. And then, I don't know, we got this sort of feeling that Shemmel and Mora are probably the two most well-known Goku. Of course, Corlette and Kalimus have their own stances and places in the world of Dragon Ball, and I absolutely love those two Gokus. I love all the English Goku. well, okay, not all of them, but they're the main four. Goku is not a complex character. He's a big kid who likes to fight. He has good morals, although he can sometimes be a little bit selfish, and his parenting skills are very questionable, but he is a good guy. And he has some very memorable moments in the world of Dragon Ball and anime as a whole. There's a reason why Dragon Ball is one of the most loved anime in Japan and indeed the world. It helped bring anime into the Western world. And you can't deny that it has a place in people's consciences. Even if you're not really familiar with anime, you're vaguely aware about what Dragon Ball Z is. I mean, for example... When I was watching Dragon Ball Z in 2003, around the Cell Saga, my dad came in and he was like going, when he saw Cell powering up, saying, why is that guy with green trousers getting angry? Or something like that. It was just like, it was such a good, oh my God, that was so weird. But back to Goku. We've done the English voices, but what about Matsuko Nozawa, the Japanese voice actress for Goku? Now, her performance is quite controversial in that, in English, speaking worlds, that is, because a lot of English people don't like Nazawa's kind of high screeching voice for Goku. They're thinking, why is Goku played by a woman? And I say, your point? Masako Nozawa is probably one of the most talented voice actors out there. She, with Goku, 
has this really strong range and she can be innocent and happy and playful and yet if you cross that Goku it just gets really really menacing and I got that most of all when watching movie 8 of the you know Broly the Legendary Super Saiyan when Nazawa is just laughing as Goku and then suddenly just goes snaps like that and it's like whoa you don't want to mess with that so she's got it perfect and of course she would that's the original voice for Goku so the original directors of Dragon Ball are going to know what they want and Mazawa delivered perfectly <laughs> Each Goku has a quality about it which I really like, and I couldn't quantify it. So I couldn't like say, oh, this guy is the worst and this person's the best. So I couldn't just do that. That's too simplistic. So just go about each voice actor and just list their strengths, list their weaknesses, and just go like that. So. What do you think? Who's your favourite Goku actor or actress? And why is that? Do you want me to go over the bad voices of Goku in the future? Just leave a comment or just prod me to um, do it. Because if you would like me to, I will. But this is kind of going my feelings of what I grew up with. I wasn't aware of the UK job when I was a teenager. Thank God. And I wasn't really aware of Nazawa until two or three years down the line when I knew a bit more about Dragon Ball. When I first knew Dragon Ball, it was Corlette and Kalimis. So, each of them I respect. Every single Goku. Because I just love the character. And I love anyone who's going to have a go at the character and give it their all. And everyone has. So, that's what I've got to say on the subject. So, if you'd like more videos about Goku and... Dragon Ball and anything else to do with anime, just check out anafilereviews.com. I'm always posting stuff and there's plenty of content. So, fill your boots. Until next time, guys. Catch you later. I would just like to say a special thank you to all my Patreon backers out there. With your support, Anafile is now back in business. Thank you once again.